waiting for the crane to show up. I like to get him in here early in the morning so we get in and get out and stay out of everybody's way. That's the cover for the unit. My sheet metal guy was tied up today. So I actually bought the cover. Crane's out of here. I got my mounting plate, my four by fours, my unit, my wire and stuff. This is maybe the rest of the cover when it's built up. Um, uh, I got a bag of fittings. I don't know if I'm gonna use the fittings or use the pipe bender yet. I'm not sure yet. I'll figure it out when I get more into it. And, uh, we'll carry on here. Okay, I got a uh, real ACR pipe. You guys always see that in my jobs. It's rated for 700 PSI. It comes nitrogenized. It's got plugs in it. It's hard drawn copper, so you can't put a bender on it without annealing it. I'm just going to use fittings today. Um, this is real refrigeration pipe. And I just always use this because that's how I was taught. We always ran lines, you know, with the ACR pipe. We never ran soft copper. If you guys ever wanted to see something funny, uh, ask your boy Dave, NorCal Dave, to run a soft copper line set. It'll be a freaking disaster. I'm just being honest. I'm not a super tech. And when it comes to soft copper line sets, I totally suck at it. But when it comes to fitting pipe... I was trained to do this and I do it pretty good. Not the best, but I, sometimes I do okay. And uh, so that's the pipe I use. If you guys are curious and why it has to be annealed when you bend it. I don't know if I ever said that on the other videos where I was getting into it, but that's ACR hard drawn copper tubing and it comes nitrogenized for refrigeration. And um, pretty sure you can use this on the medical gas piping too. Oh. I got this, uh, I always watch Tom Powell's channel. He had this uh, Milwaukee tubing cutter, so I bought one. Hot damn if that's not hot, man. Especially as you're getting older and your hands are all torn up. I got to put the camera somewhere where you, so you guys can see this thing cut a piece of pipe. I love this thing. Thanks, Tom, for sharing your tool videos. Freaking hooking a brother up. Let's see if I can get this on camera for you guys tip it a little further forward and uh, oh yeah maybe 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 that's my mark right there get it on there here we go one two three go BAM Swing! It's got a reversal. Ready for the next cut. See that? Loving this thing. Woohoo! Before you make your silver solder weld on your suction service valve, make sure you back seat the valve. They come front seated. You get heat on there sometimes when they're front seated, and they will not come apart. Uh, it wreaks havoc. So make sure you open this up and get that valve this way. Heads up. NorCal's tip of the day. Bing, 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 bing. Oh, YouTube police, he's gonna purge nitrogen. Don't pull him over, let him go, let him go. I can get it where the valve's in the middle like that. Then I can get it all prepped and ready for doing my, uh, Stainless to copper silver solder. I'm going to use the 56%. We'll see if I get a good one in there today or a bad one. We'll take a look. If you notice, there was a Schrader in there for the pressure transducer. I can't talk. So you got to take that Schrader out so your little kit will look like that. Schrader, pressure transducer, because that was mounted on the side of the valve. So you got to take all that off before you braze so you don't melt things up. And then uh, we'll be ready. Between here, it's easier to make these welds when it's vertical and you can get all the way around it. And I got another good one on there. Not too shabby. Focus. 
Um, and then you can look on the inside too and see down in there. Came out pretty good. So that's how I like to do those with the 56. And then uh, we're ready to carry on. It's been on the pressure test for like 15 minutes. It really hasn't moved. That 0.9 is bogus because I don't have the um, temperature gauge on there, but it was at 163 when it started. So I'm good with that. We're going to get ready for the smirk boner. We'll pull a vacuum on this dude. Smirk boner hooked up to the low side by the accumulator. I got my 3 8 by quarter hooked up on the receiver. I'm going to get a cheater reading on microns off the tree of the vacuum pump because I got nowhere else to put it because I got nice I got nice service valves over here so I want to use those so we'll get started get the ballast open get past its pressure test I got the TXV changed out we're gonna rip apart the old TXV just to take a look because it's old and that's where the line set went over there I picked up one connector right there we came up into the unit and we'll get this thing going i used to call them copeland condensing units i guess it's emerson but this one came without the ground lug well it's got the ground lug but it's missing the, the nut or the screw pardon me the screw and i've looked all down in here all around and it's not in there so yeah thanks emerson you guys still suck it's no, you just can't stop suckage. Knickknacks. You know, I'm always harvesting and keeping little pieces. I actually had one for that, so that's back together. Finishing up this wiring. Let's see where we're getting here. 527 at the pump, so we got a ways to go yet. Getting there with the uh, Smurf boner and the field piece. Get running. Uh, got this cover from the wholesale house. It's the Copeland units. And those are made by RDM. You get a nice base and a nice cover for your condensing unit. They're made in the USA. You get a nice look to it when you're all done. They're up and running here. And you'll see a 30 degree down. in like three. about 115 I'm all done it's up and running kick some ass on this one today there was there really wasn't much to it um, <laughs> I like to put I weigh the charging on these units and I'll write it on there and you guys will see me do that 14 pounds 10 ounces only so if I come out on a night call I'll know if I have enough refrigerant on my van 
if it's flat. Um, and that's the reason I do that, if you guys were ever wondering. So this one's coming around, so it's a glass door lineup in a gas station. Drinks, tons of beers, food, stuff like that. Of course, there's no food in it right now because it's been hot for three or four days. I'm going to let this box cool down, come back tomorrow afternoon, and then I can set my evaporator super heat. I need to set it when it's at set point. Um, so I'm going to let it pull down and come around. Usually with Sporland valves, you get really close. Really close on those. So box is coming around. It's cooling down. And um, we let it rip. The old TXV from that job. Let's see how it looks. All right. So I used to work with this old guy and he taught me well and he was like anytime you do a compressor change or a condensing unit you always change the metering device and look at the condition of this thing look inside here you're not going to put nitrogen through there or pull a vacuum and clean this valve up you can take it apart and clean it for sure but labor-wise and stuff, it's easier and cheaper just to go get a freshie. Let's see what the screen looks like on the inlet screen. It's not plugged. A little dirty. But you can see in there she's cooked up pretty good because it's old. There's the needle. Let's see if it'll focus. So... I'm just passing that along. I don't care if you guys do that or not. All I can do is give you tips of what I've learned along the way and over the years. And it's a good rule of thumb. You know, you got it. You're going to do a compressor change out, replace the TXV too. Changing out a condensing unit, replace the TXV. It's, it's a pain in the butt. We all know it is. But as you can see, you'll keep yourself out of trouble and the customer will get a good deal in the end. Okay, um, I got to tape up the end of my pipes there. You can see I haven't done that yet. And then I'm going to start cleaning up my garbage and stuff. I got my pallet over there. I put a bunch of trash in that box. Almost drank a whole water bottle. Good job, Dave. And uh, then we can get inside that box and see how it's coming down. Subscribe and we will see you on the next one.